So a little, we are going to revise the play. Mrs. Pearson, the mother, not respected by her family, reason. First reason is that she loves her family a lot. She loves her family. Because of this, her family doesn't respect her because the family takes her for granted. She loves her family so much that she is never able to make her family realize her importance. So that's why her family takes her for granted and eventually forgets that Mrs. Pearson has also the right to live a normal life. That Mrs. Pearson also deserves respect, love from the family. So they forget this because of her loving nature for the family. They start, they start taking her for granted. And there is another reason that Mrs. Pearson is not respected. That is that she, she has become weak. Her love has made her weak. Love has made her weak. So because she loves her family so much that she has eventually become weak because she cannot take, uh, you can say, action. She cannot raise her voice against the injustice her family is meeting out to her. So it's her only love which is the root of all problems. Right? So she loves her family and uh, the family takes her for granted and this love has made her become weak character and she is not able to take any action against the exploitation uh, which is being done by, the, by her family only. So then Mrs. Pearson uh, is being helped by her friend, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Mrs. Fitzgerald is her neighbor and uh, she is a friend of Mrs. Pearson also. So Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is a neighbor, plus the one who is a fortune teller, plus the one who can play, uh, she is a fortune teller, she uh, does tarot card reading, right? So Mrs. Fitzgerald, the neighbor, the fortune teller, and the one who knows magic. These three characteristics you must know about Fitzgerald. Neighbor, fortune teller, and the one she uh, knows magic also. So she wants to help Mrs. Pearson. In the beginning, Mrs. Pearson doesn't want any help, uh, some help from the outsider, but eventually she agrees. What she agrees to? She agrees to become Mrs. Fitzgerald and Mrs. Fitzgerald becomes Mrs. Pearson. So with magic, both of them, you know, change personalities. Okay, outwardly, Mrs. Pearson becomes Mrs. Fitzgerald and Mrs. Fitzgerald becomes Mrs. Pearson, right? Then, now in that house, it is Mrs. Fitzgerald. It is Mrs. Fitzgerald who, as Mrs. Pearson, will take over the charge of family and will mend the family. So when Mrs. Fitzgerald will be looking like Mrs. Pearson, then first Doris will come. Doris is a daughter. Doris like usually, uh, how she usually behave? Usually whenever she comes to home, she wants that, that her tea and all should be ready, that her dress should be ready. So she is like very dominating upon her mother. She treats her mother <coughs> like a servant. And Mrs. Fitzgerald makes Doris realize that she makes her realize how a daughter should behave in a family. So Doris is almost in tears. Then the Cyril, the boy Cyril comes. Both kids, this is a daughter, this is son. Both of the kids are spoiled. Both of them are spoiled by Mrs. Pearson. So Mrs. Fitzgerald makes, sets them to the right track. How does she make them right? How does she mend their behavior? Not by lecturing them, not by explaining the reasons and all. She just remains cool. Mrs. Fitzgerald as Mrs. Pearson just remains cool and mends the behavior of both Doris and Cyril. And finally, when these children are almost, you know, on the verge of crying, then they have just one hope that is when their father would come. 
so they think like when father would come then maybe uh, then mother miss, uh, would be all right so when mr pearson when mrs pearson's husband that is the father comes mr george so when mr george comes then what happens mrs fitzgerald still behaves the same way she uh, does the same things which she had done to children so then father also realizes that uh, mrs fitzgerald had changed and even Fitz mr george also feels a need to change his way of life towards his wife so what is the biggest uh, thing which she does to the father that is mr george she tells mrs fitzgerald tells the uh, tells mr george that he is being laughed at at the club people call him pompey ompy pearson because of his uh, being slow and because of his being so fat so mr george doesn't know this and he is quite aggrieved uh, at this knowledge and he wants to confirm whether this is a fact or not he asks the he asks his son whether it is a reality or not then son also confirms that yes people make fun of him so what's the point of telling uh, mr george that he is being made fun of at the club mrs fitzgerald wants to tell him that he had been leaving his wife all alone at home each evening throughout his life for the outsiders for the people who are at club for the people who call him names for the people who uh, who don't love him for the people who make fun of him rather so the people who make fun of him for those people mrs uh, for those people mr george had been leaving his wife all alone night after night night after night so the point is mrs fitzgerald wants to tell to her to mr george that he must have been taking care of his wife he should spend time with his wife and children because it's a family who never makes fun of you it's a family who actually looks after you who actually bothers for your well being so mrs fitzgerald tells mr george that he is a butt of laughter at the club her purpose was not to hurt him her purpose was to make him realize that he must value his family he must value his wife okay he must give time to his family when the fathers don't give time to their family then in that family we get the doris and cyril kinds of children because children do what their elders do so if the father cannot remain at home in the evening why will children do the same thing so children always follow the head of the family head of the family means the one who is quite dominating if the father would be respecting the mother children would automatically respect their mother when father would be respecting his wife children would also be respecting the by uh, the mother as well as grandparents so what the head of the family does the same thing is followed by the children so this is what mrs fitzgerald wanted to teach you can say to mr george and after this children from this very point we are to read now that when mr george comes to know the reality he becomes very upset and he leaves the room he goes to other room and then on stage we will see only mrs fitzgerald and cyril then cyril will talk to mrs fitzgerald uh, she he will tell her like why is she hurt father what it because in this kind of family uh, where children you know you always look on to the fathers for inspiration then when the father is insulted like this then children would not like it they would scold mother like why she did that right so now let's continue the just a minute beta okay yeah so here george 
Cyril enters from the uh, other side with a glass of milk in one hand and a thick slice of cake in the other. George, almost dazed, turns to him appealingly. So George here, Cyril, you have been with me to the club once or twice. They don't laugh at me and call me Pompey, Pompey Pearson, do they? Cyril got embarrassed, hesitates angrily. Go on, tell me, do they? So George is confirming from Cyril whether what his wife is saying, if that was right or not, then Cyril, embarrassed. Well, yes, dad, I'm afraid they do. So Cyril confirms that yes, it was so. George slowly looks from one to the other, staggered. George, slowly, well, I'll be damned. So George exits, then Cyril. Now you shouldn't have told him that, mom. That's not fair. You have hurt his feelings, mine too. So how has Mrs. Uh, Pearson hurt feelings of her husband? The answer is by telling him the reality, by telling him that he is a, that he is being laughed at by others at the club. So when you tell your family the fact, uh, is, is the purpose to hurt somebody? Is the purpose to hurt somebody? Hmm? When the family does start doing these kinds of things, then in that family, the degradation is always near. So Cyril, embarrassed. Okay, then Cyril says, Mrs. Pearson, sometimes it does, sometimes it does people good to have their feelings hurt. The truth ought, oughtn't to hurt anybody for long. If your father didn't go to the club so often, perhaps they would stop laughing at him. So what's the answer? Mrs. Pearson says that number one, the truth should not hurt anyone. And moreover, had he, uh, had he or father not been going to the club for long, then he would not have been laughed at. So you are uh, a butt of laughter when you go to a place, when you keep on going to that place. When you stop going to the place, why will somebody laugh at you? Got it? So the best way to avoid being laughed at by others is avoid going that place. They would stop laughing at him gloomily. I doubt it. So Cyril says, I doubt. Pearson, uh, swearly. Possibly you do. But what I doubt is whether your opinion is worth having. So this is what the right attitude is. So children in this kind of family become very, uh, you know, they start dominating their mother. So what Mrs. Pearson was saying, the children would hardly agree with her. So see, Mr. Cyril, uh, the boy said like, I doubt what you say. I, I don't think it's right. Then Mrs. Pearson told him that number one, uh, I doubt whether your opinion is of any value. She told him like, uh, your opinion hardly matters for me. What do you know? Nothing. You spent too much time and good money at Greyhound races and dirt tracks and ice shows. So now even this boy is being caught. So far, uh, Doris, you know, she had been, uh, you know, victimized. Father was victimized. Cyril was left. Now even his turn has come. So she says like, uh, what do you do whole day? You don't do anything worthwhile. You spend your whole time in the greyhound races and dirt tracks and ice shows. So this boy, Cyril, has been in, uh, is involved in gambling and all. Okay, when you spend your money in races and all, it means that that is sort of gambling. So Cyril had been spending his whole time in greyhound races uh, and wasting his money. So this is what Mrs. Fitzgerald tells him. Okay. So Cyril appeared to be nice so far, but this is his reality. Now Cyril, well, what I, but well, what if I do? I've got to enjoy myself somehow, haven't I? So these kinds of children don't give up easily. So he has his logic to explain. He says, I have to enjoy my life. Don't I have to, Pearson? I won't mind so much if you were really enjoying yourself. But are you? And where is it getting you? There is a sharp, hurried knocking, a uh, herd of left. So then Mrs. Pearson tells the boy that uh, uh, had it been actually the fun, then I would have agreed. But the fact is that it's you are also not enjoying. And moreover, where is it leading you? Means where is it getting you? What is the future? That's the point. 
So then there is a knock at the door and children who might be coming? Any guess? Who will come now? Chirag? Okay, Kavya. Miss Pearson or the person that's in Miss Fitzgerald's body. That's correct. Yes, beauty yourself better. Kavya, well done. So now there is a knocking at the door and there will be, who will there be? The real mother of the family. Mrs. Pearson is, has come. Because Mrs. Pearson, the mother of Cyril and Doris, she cannot control herself. She cannot restrict herself from, uh, from being out of the house for a long time. She must have been worried, like, what is happening in my house? How Mrs. Fitzgerald might be doing? So she's so worried. So she has come now. Let's see what, she, what happens when she comes. So far, we, what has Mrs. Fitzgerald been able to do? What has Mrs. Fitzgerald been able to do? She has been able to teach husband and both children the, a lesson. She has been tell them like what they are and what they should be. Got it? So almost you can say 50% job is done. And children, this is not, and you people might also imagine, you can also make out like this is not something very big. When a child does something wrong, I guess the mother uh, points it out there and then to the children. But here Mrs. Pearson dared not tell children what wrong they were doing. She dared not tell her husband what wrong he was doing. One more question arises in our mind. Like, did Mrs. Pearson, the real wife of Mrs. Uh, Mr. George, did she know that Mr. Pearson, Mr. George was being, uh, was being laughed at at the club? Did she know? That's also a question with us. And the answer is that yes, even Mr. George, even Mrs. Pearson knew this but she had no guts to tell her father, tell her husband, like what was happening with him outside. So the people, those who hide the realities in their own family, those families we cannot expect to be on the right track. So here is Mrs. Uh, Pearson. Cyril hurries out left in a moment. He re-enters, closing the door behind him. Mrs. Pearson. It's that silly old bag. So, uh, it's that silly old bag from the next door, Mrs. Fitzgerald. You don't want her here, do you? So who is the speaker of this dialogue? It's that silly old bag from uh, our next door. Who is the speaker? Cyril. So Cyril tells her mother that our next door neighbor, Mrs. Fitzgerald has come. But how does he describe her? It's a silly old bag from next door. So how he describes Mrs. Fitzgerald? In front of Mrs. Fitzgerald, that silly old bag has come from next door. Whom is he telling this? He's telling this to Mrs. Fitzgerald herself. And he says that uh, you don't want to see her, do you? So Mrs. Pearson, sharply, certainly I do. Ask her in and don't call her a silly old bag either. She's a very nice woman with a lot more sense than you will ever have. So this is Mrs. Fitzgerald who is saying the same, who is speaking about herself. I guess you all understand, I don't need to explain. So this Pearson is Fitzgerald only, and she says that this, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald is far more sensible than what you people are. Cyril left uh, exits. Mrs. Pearson finishes her stout, smacking her lips. Then Cyril re-enters. Uh, ushering in Mrs. Fitzgerald who hesitates in the doorway. So then now Mrs. Fitzgerald comes who is, you know, a little hesitant at the doorway. So this Mrs. Fitzgerald is actually Mrs. Pearson, right? Then Mrs. Fitzgerald, the, the, the fake one, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Uh, so Mrs. Uh, Pearson tells her to come in. Then she says, uh, I just wondered if everything is all right. Uh, Cyril, no, it isn't. Then Mrs. Fitzgerald, sharply, of course it is. You be quiet, Cyril. So he gets insulted. Why should I be quiet? Because I tell you to, you silly, spoiled, young python. So this Mrs. Pearson, 
who is actually Mrs. Fitzgerald, when Cyril speaks in front of the outsider, when children speak uh, uh, nonsensically in front of the outsiders, then parents usually become quiet, thinking that uh, uh, that the, uh, that uh, they might be insulted or the child might be insulted. But here, Mrs. Pearson adopted the right approach. When the child became, uh, you know, nonsense, then the mother, Mrs. Pearson is also no less. She says, uh, like, uh, he said, like, why should I be quiet? Mother said, because I tell you to, you silly, spoiled, young piken. Mrs. Fitzgerald protesting nervously. Oh, no, no, surely. So Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is actually Mrs. Pearson, she cannot see this sight that her son is being insulted. That is where the mothers go wrong. Anyways, we are leaving it here. Page number is 46.